YouTube, Facebook, and Tumblr fans, it's time yet again for another classic review. So, this time I'm going to be taking on one of my favorite first-person shooters, Perfect Dark, for the Nintendo 64. So, basically getting into it, there are two different versions of this. The original version, which was released on the N64, as I previously mentioned, which was released in 2000, as well as a 10-year anniversary edition that was a remaster slash remake. They kind of built it from the ground up, made everything run at 60 frames a second, and it was released for the Xbox Live Arcade in 2010, like I said, 10 years later. So, getting into it, obviously I prefer the digital remake of it, but the N64 version is actually pretty good. I've actually never played it on the console, though, and you actually need the expansion pack in order to unlock pretty much the entire the entirety of the single-player campaign, so... It's a little weird in that aspect. You kind of have to spend a little bit extra money to unlock everything. So it's not like DLC, though, where you actually have to literally spend money to unlock everything. Getting into the actual game, you star Joanna Dark, which is a female protagonist, which is weird because not many games these days star female protagonists. But anyways, you actually star as Joanna Dark, a field agent of the Carrington Institute, on a mission to spy on Datadyne, which is a company that is performing illegal operations, and you come to find that there's an alien subplot that actually becomes the main plot in the later missions, so you basically have to save the world. It's The plot's really cliche, the dialogue is really poor, but it's just good, straight-up action in the shooting department. That's basically where everything starts, and the combat simulator is just practically flawless in this. I mean... You can set up to eight simulators in the N N64 version, almost at NES for some reason, but in the N64 version, you can set up eight simulators, and for some reason in the XBLA version, you can only set up four, but it doesn't really matter because I only usually set up one or two anyways, so, you know, that's not really that big of an issue for me, but it would have been nice to have the entirety of the full game ported over a little bit with those options, but anyways... Good, clean, awesome action, and the shooting is definitely where the game hits its stride. One of the best things about it is just the sheer variety of all the weapons that you can have. And unlike Halo or Call of Duty or any of the modern-day first-person shooters where you can only have two weapons and two kinds of grenades, everything is at your disposal. Just like all the classic first-person shooters where you just have a, an array of different weapons, different grenades, different gadgets and gizmos, and you can just tinker around with them. It's really fun, and it's awesome, and it's very classic. It has this really classic kind of vintage feel to it, especially in the snap aiming, which is another point that I have to get into. It has snap aiming, which is, if you don't know what it is, it's not a very smooth kind of aiming. Like, you'll tilt the joystick over a little bit, but then the reticle will go back to the center of the screen instead of staying where it's at. So, it's a, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's a little easier to manage in the XBLA version of the, uh, the remaster. And it actually fits the Xbox controller flawlessly, especially making use of the dual analog stick. So I'm going to give these two games separate ratings, and, you know, like I said, just getting into that. With the actual game, though, with the N64 version, they have um, three different difficulty settings, or four if you count Perfect Dark as a difficulty setting, but... I believe it's Agent, Double Agent, uh, Perfect Agent, and then Perfect Dark if you unlock it by getting everything else. But the missions, the actual objectives in the missions, you get a list of objectives, Objective 1, 2, 3, and 4, and if you fail any of the objectives, you fail the mission and you have to restart. Now, in the N64 version, it didn't give you a prompt to restart when you f um, failed a mission, so you'd just be wandering around wondering what the fuck you were doing. Now, you can still do that in the XBLA version, but it does give you a prompt to restart because there's really no point in completing the level if you're just going to fail anyways at the end. So, the objectives themselves, though, are just kind of cryptic, and you kind of have to just know what you're doing a little bit. It's kind of like Goldeneye in that aspect, where it's just got that kind of dated datedness to it, I suppose. It's not really a word, but it just has that kind of cryptic, sort of figure it out as you go along kind of vibe to it, which isn't all bad, actually. Once you actually know what the objectives are, and in this day and age you can look it up online anyways, it's a really fun time. I mean, albeit really hard probably for the people back then, but it's really fun. So really, with my um, top tops in this, for my top qualities for this game, would probably have to be the shooting, the variety of weapons, 
and just being able to play as a female protagonist because that was pretty awesome. So the weaknesses though are the dialogue and the story which were kind of meant for to be staples a little bit. It just kind of seemed like they were just kind of staples to kind of hold the game together in all of its action and all of its glory. You got to have some kind of backstory. So, you know, I suppose there's an alien named Elvis in it too, which is really interesting. Really kind of weird though. But then there is two bonus missions at the end that you can get after you beat the game on various difficulties. So overall, the original will probably get a 9 out of 10. It's an awesome experience, awesome, awesome gameplay, but the dialogue is kind of poor. And you know, like I said, I mean, it's better than Goldeneye in my opinion. I mean, like, in terms of just, like, the shooting and the variety and such, but as far as the story goes and as far as the level design, I would have to pick Goldeneye over it. But there are some things in this in that this game actually does have voice acting. That's pretty sweet because all the games for the N64, you know, bar maybe like a few phrases here and there on the Mario games, didn't have voice acting. They had the little text boxes still. And the, the PlayStation 1 was pretty far ahead of it in that aspect because they had vo games with full-on voice acting like Metal Gear Solid by this time. So... You know, by the year 2000, the N64 had a lot of catching up to do, and it would just kind of cap it off at 2001 anyways, so I suppose this was one of um, their swan songs, the N64 swan song, something like that. But the XBLA version, however, it kicks it up a notch, but I have to dock it a little bit because it only allows you to have four simulators versus the the full-on 8 that you could have, so I'm going to give that one probably a 9.5 out of 10. So, it's not perfect, pretty good game, but pretty good, you know, just action in general, but, you know, you guys should check it out, either way, and just make your own judgment, because I personally really love it, it's one of my favorite first-person shooter games, just to go out and play, and have a good time with, try to figure out some of the missions and like, but, you know, like I said, overall, the story and dialogue are definitely lacking. With that, that's really all I have to say. The original, for me, gets a 9 out of 10. Remake, 9.5. So, with that, this is Midnight Strike 3625. Thank you very much. Keep calm and rock on.